Now let's um, take a step toward realism by making the permeability to sodium much lower than the permeability to potassium, which is what we see in the resting membrane. Now is it realistic to draw just one channel to no. represent this? What we're sort of trying to portray is, I think of it as like the sum of all of the channels. So really, we just would have more potassium channels than sodium channels. And so if we summed them all up, this gap would be bigger. Right. Good. I so. like that. Now what does that do to these concentration fluxes? Um, well, it would make the sodium flux much smaller ah, than okay. the potassium. So let's start with that. So now, because it's less permeable, its ability to follow its concentration gradient is reduced, and that flux, J sodium concentration, is now smaller. What does that mean in terms of the net charges moving into or out of the membrane? Um, we'd have a net positive charge moving out of the membrane ah, due okay. to this potassium. And what does that do to charges near the membrane? It would cause an electrical sort of charge separation. And what kinds of charges would build up inside? Negative. Because you're pulling out positive charges. Good. And positive charges on the outside. Right. So you're creating an electrical gradient. So we didn't have to worry about this in our previous case. What does that do in terms of fluxes? Um, well, now we have to worry about an electrical flux into the cell. All right. So should we draw those things? Which way will go for the potassium? It will be pulled sort of inwards. In. Okay. So and this so that's is J, J potassium electrical. electrical. And what about sodium? It would also be pulled in. Yeah, that's you're right. Because right. we're dealing with positive charges still. That's right. So it's going to want to go in towards the negative charges. This is J sodium electrical. Okay. Much more complicated situation. Yeah. All right. Now, um, let's calculate, just to help ourselves, the Nernst potentials. Well, we actually know that. We did that calculation previously for the potassium. What was it equal to? It's 75 millivolts. Negative 75, because it's moving out of the cell. That's correct. Okay. Now, since this is flipped, what would be the Nernst potential? This one, we just flip the sign, That's basically. That's right. That's a log trick, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is plus 75. See? You didn't have to do any fancy calculations. All right. Now we're going to ask the following question. In previous cases where we had one ion to worry about, mm -hmm. we were able to have a situation where we could sit at some like minus 75 millivolts, mm -hmm. but the flux in and the flux out to the concentration and electrical gradients was equal and opposite for each individual ion. Mm -hmm. Is that true here? Well, let's see. So let's start with what we know. So just overall, mm -hmm. the concentration flux has to be equal and opposite to the electrical flux. Why is that true for this membrane? What do we what do we know about the membrane if it's at this potential, whatever that potential is, that makes that true? We it's because the membrane potential isn't changing. That's exactly. what we're gonna assume. We're gonna assume that we get to that. some point where it stops changing, we're in steady state, like we had before with the the simpler case where it's at at zero millivolts will sit somewhere else. Let's say, I don't know, minus 60 millivolts. Okay. And at that, yeah, let's just write that down. And at that value, we'll say it's a steady state and it's not changing anymore. And so you can say that the concentration flux has to be equal and opposite to the electrical flux. Good. Mm -hmm. What about the constituent fluxes of the ions? Well, let's see. I'm just going to rearrange this slightly and say, just to sort of put it down, that the concentration plus the electrical, that's not the right word, is equal to zero. Excellent. So let's look at the concentrations mm -hmm. should be equal to the potassium concentration. Flux. Flux, yeah. And the sodium. Flux mm -hmm. due to concentration. That's right. Same with the electrical. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Equals the potassium electrical plus the sodium electrical. Right. So let's 
So from what you just said, each of those, those two fluxes, concentration and electrical, are they sum to zero. Mm -hmm. And they're positive and negative depending on which direction these arrows That's are That's correct. Okay. okay. So we may come back to those. Mm -hmm. But if you put those into the first equation, what do you get? Then we get that the potassium flux due to concentration plus the sodium flux, that's a J, mm -hmm. it's a very sloppy J, due to concentration plus, so that was the, the first term. Now we're going to do the electrical flux. The potassium flux due to electrical plus the sodium flux due to electrical should equal zero. Good. So we could arrange the, rearrange that to focus on each individual ion and see what that gave us. Right? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to add the potassium concentration of electrical fluxes and the sodium concentration of electrical fluxes. And again, that's equal to zero. Good. Now, when you were at, if you were at the Nernst potential for potassium, what would you be able to say about those first two fluxes? If I was at the potassium Nernst potential, so if we were at the negative 75 millivolts, then these two should be equal and opposite. And, the, so, and they would become zero mm -hmm. at minus 70 millivolts. 75. Minus, minus 75, 75 millivolts. But what about these two? These two would be equal and opposite at 75 millivolts. So can they be equal and opposite at minus 75 millivolts? No. Okay, so can they be the whole thing be equal to zero? No. Right, and if the membrane were at plus 75 millivolts, those last two terms would cancel out, but mm -hmm. the first two terms would not. So you can't have both things be true at the same time because you're not at the Nernst potential for either of the ions. So what we're going to have to do to keep the overall sort of flux thing true is we're going to need to do some sort of crafty combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can now think about it. In terms of the concentration fluxes, what's going to be the net flux in or out? Well, we've got this really strong concentration flux for potassium out, right. but only a weak flux inward. So the net concentration flux should be out. It, right. So that's going to be outwards. Mm -hmm. And then what about the electrical? That's, well, we've got two arrows pointing in, so the net flux should be in. And that's going to be equal and opposite to that overall concentration going out. Mm -hmm. What does that mean in terms of what's happening to the potassium ions? Are the potassium ions that flux out being matched by the same number of potassium ions fluxing back in? No. No. Because the potassium ions sort of, the, the flux due to electrical current for the potassium is smaller than That's the concentration. Right, point. as we just worked out from doing this. So you're losing potassium ions out. And then what's happening to the sodium? It's fluxing inwards. That's right. Okay, so after a long period of time, then right. I'm going to draw a completely new sort of setup. So after a long period of time at this, we've got the large potassium concentration flux mm -hmm. and the small potassium electrical flux. That's right. And then the the sodium fluxes. Right. And the nice thing is if you add all those arrows up properly, they're going to be equal and they're mm -hmm. going to be equal and opposite and it'll be zero. Right? Because the concentration flux when you take that piece of the um, uh, electrical away and then balance it with the sodium fluxes, they'll be equal and opposite. Okay. But well, what's going to happen is what was initially 400 and 20 with the concentration flux going that way, these would probably not stay that way. They'd, That's right. This one would decrease and this one would increase. That's right. So if we're going to stay at this sort of steady state, again, right. we need to input energy. That's right. So we're so what would we add to the membrane to make that happen? Okay. Will we add another pump? That's right. And how would that work? And this needs to be pushing potassium in and sodium out. And what does it take to run it? It takes energy in the form of ATP. Excellent. So now we understand how the membrane 
fluxes work, and we understand why it's a steady state, not an equilibrium. It requires energy. You have to have a pump. Yep. Good. I'm just going to fill in our concentrations. Correct. Now, okay, the last step we can do here then, we set up the concentrations like this, so they were minus 75 plus 75, but in the real membrane, and let's say the squid giant axon, the sodium concentrations are a little different, right? Mm -hmm. On the outside, they're 440 millimolar. On the inside, they're 50 millimolar. Mm -hmm. And so what's the Nernst potential that you're sitting at for sodium alone? Where for would it sodium alone? You can calculate it. What do you get? That's 58 millivolts times log of out over in. Right. So 440 40 over 50, 50, which when we calculate it out should be about 55 millivolts. That's right. So that's more realistic. And that under, now we understand, but the flux analysis we did would not change very significantly. Yeah, because the permeability is also would, would change to, to adjust it, and it would sit at minus sixty. Okay, so we've gotten to our membrane resting potential mm -hmm. with its steady state. With the steady state and with an understanding of the different fluxes. Yep.